Mayonnaise an instrument? What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to give us a video on the Emperor ship that we're obviously on our week of straight ESO content. A video every single day while I'm off of work. A stream every single day. The stream will actually be after this video is released. Switching it up a little bit. Also, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. We are so close. We're going to hit an achievement at some point here coming up soon, which is just absolutely crazy because the channel is only two years old and I didn't even think we would get this far. So help your boy out. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get ourselves to 10,000 subscribers. And let's talk about the three main ways that you can get the Emperor ship. So this video is going to be broken into the three main ways you can get the Emperor ship in the Elder Scrolls Online, as well as a handful of tips that are kind of universal to how you're going to utilize those campaigns and let us also talk about the rewards why do you want to become the emperor because i think that's a big point because unfortunately regardless of how many tips that i tell you you're gonna likely be in cyrodiil for a while um probably potentially for multiple days straight if you're lucky so what's what's what do you get you get this beautiful seat Unfortunately, it does not look very comfortable. I don't know if I would be able to sit on this for an extended period of time because as you can see, there's not really like a throw pillow or anything below it. You're kind of sitting on this cold, hard stone and it just doesn't seem very appealing, but they give you this absolute dripped out outfit here, which you can dye, by the way. That's actually, if you've seen Isabel in any of my videos, she wears the blue dyed version of this, but you get this absolute drip that you can wear. This crown and all this entire costume also comes with it. And you get temporary access. Temporary being as long as you're the Emperor. You get access to this inside your campaign. You get the Emperor ship bonus passives. Which basically just make you like Sauron slaughtering people in the you know War of the Ring. So, why do you want to become the Emperor? Those are the reasons. That's, that's what you're going to get. You also will get one of the hardest achievements in Xbox slash PlayStation slash PC. In fact... Emperor ship actually ranked in the top 10 hardest Xbox achievements on Xbox. So you can, if you're watching this, you don't play the Elder Scrolls online. Well, all you have to do is grind out a character, you know, and then grind out some sets, maybe make some friends, yada, yada. And you can, you know, push for this achievement. It probably is easier if you play Elder Scrolls online before you try to go for this achievement. But the important part is, is that you have fun along the way. So let's talk about the three main campaigns that you're going to be able to do this in and kind of the pros and the cons for those campaigns because that's going to be, unfortunately, the biggest piece of what we talk about. So campaigns. I personally became the emperor through Raven Watch. Raven Watch has a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Let's talk about the pros. No proc sets. Now, what we will not be talking about today is the people who purchase Emperorship because that's a whole separate conversation that I've never really wanted to dabble in because I don't want to highlight that part of the community. However, not having proc sets fire makes people who AP boost and cheat significantly more difficult. So when campaigns reset, a lot of people will end up going to places like Ravenwatch because you get that good, clean, crisp PvP where people are not overtly farming to try to get the emperor ship you know having a bunch of their friends boost them or anything you know illicit like that the other good thing too is is that the sets that are actually non-proc are very easy to come by so you're able to make a build that makes you very viable very quickly without having to go and get any sort of obscure pvp sets you're going to be able to utilize a lot of very easy overland slash crafted sets and go right on in there and be able to do massive amounts of damage and be pretty competitive, you know, with other players. The other positive about this thing is, is there's not a ton of players that can roll into the negative concept, but we'll talk about that as we kind of go along too. But you're not going to be competing with thousands of other players who also want to become the emperor, you know, maybe tens to, you know, maybe a hundred. Uh, so there's less of the, the ceiling in that regard. Now, the cons. You, like me, will run into a situation, if you're unlucky, where you're not the Emperor, somebody else is, and everything is taken. Your entire, your entire campaign is covered in blue. There's no farms that you could take, there's no Elder Scrolls you could take, there's nothing that you could take. That is definitely a con when you run into a campaign like this where this, there's less players because a alliance can completely steamroll the entire campaign that is a downside because you may be in a situation like me where 
you basically have to wait for another alliance to get on and start really you know forming a counter offensive against you and then you're still going to be tempted to fight them because you're going to need more ap because you want to continue to maintain yourself on the leaderboard so that's going to be a logistical problem that you are going to run into because as long as those keeps are held by you in any capacity even if you have just one for those of you who are confused and don't know the specifics of the logistical piece emperorship is very straightforward right now black reach dc is the emperorship however here's the here's the real question trivia question for you what would the what would they have to lose to lose the emperorship the answer is they would have to lose every single inner keep and if you're like me that can take a long time to wait if your alliance is doing very, very well and you want to continue to get AP and that can cause a whole bunch of internal drama in yourself and internal dilemmas. But as long as blue maintains any single one of these inner keeps, the inner ones being the ones that are around the white gold tower, they maintain emperorship. That's very important. Now, somebody else will not become the emperor. So say red takes half and yellow takes half they will not become the emperor until they at least at one point take all of them so yellow would have to come in and take all of these inner keeps to then become the emperor so there's a big difference between dethroning and then becoming the emperor there's not always going to be an emperor because of that so keep that in mind that's very important that's one of the major downsides to this campaign um, and you're always going to unfortunately be running against those individuals um, but I think this is a very easy campaign to get into if you want to practice it There's also no Valandrome, which again has pros and cons Valandrome can make very quick switches from who's doing very well it can also be a great encourager for people to come in and alliances so If Valandrome is held by their alliance, so it could be a pro it could be a con It's just important for you guys to know that it will not be in the campaign now Next up, we have the Below 50 campaign. And the most people I know that who go into this actually farm the Below 50 campaign. Now, why is Below 50 so special? It not only has a different campaign end date, which we'll talk about when we get the tips, um, it also has Below 50 characters, which can be a little bit interesting. Because here's the thing, when a character gets over the level of 50, they're taken off the leaderboard. So that's very important because the leaderboards determine how close you are to becoming the emperor. For some reason, I have 307 AP points in this campaign, for example. So I am 237th in line. But let's say I was grinding out and I was second place in the below 50 campaign. If BKB then re leveled out, and this was the below level 50 campaign, he would be taken off the leaderboards. So you don't even have to compete with him anymore. So a lot of your competition will go away throughout the campaign. So a lot of people will come in with their friends and they'll go and they'll take large swaths of land for an alliance and then they'll be able to you know, get a whole bunch of AP doing that. We'll talk more about that in tips on how to maximize your AP as well as some other tips. So don't stay tuned, we'll get there. Uh, but we're talking about campaign still for this campaign and just one more. And that will be the biggest advantage that you have. Obviously, there's no cam champion points because it's below 50 and alliance locking is disabled. So that means you're able to basically go in with multiple different alliance characters, which is important. We'll talk about that in tips. Um, I would say, too, that the seven-day duration also makes this very easy because that means every week somebody is able to come in and basically farm out this campaign this is probably the easiest way to emperorship but you have to do on a new character but remember achievements are universal between characters so if one of your characters is the emperor any of your characters can use that title of former emperor because achievements are account wide so just remember that if you do have to make a new character it's not you know the end of the world if you wanted one of your other characters to be the emperor and have that title or have that furnishing because the achievements will be universal so don't worry now now we have the traditional campaigns. Now, there are definitely a lot of pros and a lot of cons to using these campaigns. The biggest one is that if you're a higher tiered, skilled PVPer who utilizes proc sets, if you're a bomber, if you have groups, ball groups, it's definitely going to be easier in Greyhost versus something like Raven Watch or Ice Reach because you're not going to be able to really use a lot of those sets because they're going to be proc based sets. Now, with that becomes 
the unfortunateness that you're going to be competing against hundreds, if not thousands of other people in those campaigns who are either racking up AP or would be opportunistic that if they were getting a bunch of AP that they would try to push for the Emperorship. The other good thing, though, too, about Greyhost and the other campaign similar is, is that there's a lot of alliance changes that happen, which means that you're not going to be in that stagnation that you will be in Ice Reach slash Ravenwatch where you're like, nobody's losing anything. Can somebody come take these six keeps in the middle, please, so that we can, you know, re-roll this because some dum dum's the Emperor and I'm second and now I'm first and he's still the Emperor even though I passed him in AP. So you may run into situations like that in those other campaigns. You will rarely run into that in Grey Host because there's going to be consistent PvP and consistent action going on, which means that if you have more free time, places like Grey Host can be better because... You will run into periods in Ice Reach and Raven Watch where there might not be any conflict. So you may have time where you're not at work, you're not at school, you're not busy, and you're not really able to rack up any AP. That will never really happen in these campaigns, you know, barring some sort of crazy circumstance that I've never run into before. So that's going to be the main draw to Grey Host. The biggest cons, again, are going to be people who do AP boost, people who buy the Emperorship title. You're going to see more of those in these CP-enabled campaigns because it's easy to boost them, unfortunately. So you may be running against people who are, unfortunately, cheating. Uh, but that's kind of the pros and the cons that you have to weigh when you pick between these three main methods. Now, tips. Tips is probably one of the funnest parts of this video because... I have actually watched other people give out tips. I've kind of written down some of my own in my own notepad, and I'm excited to give you guys some tips. My tip number one is to have a group. Now, this might seem very straightforward, but having a group not only will help ensure that you get AP at a more consistent rate, but it also makes sure that you know where you're going, you're involved in the action, because a lot of people who want to be the emperor have reached out and said, you know, can I do it alone? You certainly could, but knowing where the action is and knowing where you need to go and knowing where the next offensive is, knowing where the next defense is going to be, knowing all that coordination is going to make sure that you're in the conflict and you're getting that AP. Because at the end of the day, all Emperorship boils down to is, is having those keeps and having the most AP. That's it. There's no other sort of weird political intrigue. It's not Game of Thrones. You don't have to like execute your cousin or anything. All you have to do, most AP when those keeps are taken. Or if you're if you pass the Emperor and your own, you know, alliance, you gotta make sure that you lose all those and then you retake them again and then you maintain your number one slot. That's it. Boilerplate level, it's very straightforward. Having a group, therefore, is one of the easiest ways to make sure that you're getting that most amount of AP. But AP probably one of the most important things how can you get more ap so what a lot of people don't know is is that there are a lot of delves in cyrodiil if you kill a delve boss in cyrodiil you get an ap buff ap buffs obviously as we've just mentioned are very essential so making sure that you have that buff as often as possible will ensure that you get more ap because a lot of people don't go and pick up that ap buff so go out get a delve boss buff all you have to do kill any delve boss and then make sure that you have that buff as active as often as possible. 15% is a pretty healthy amount, especially if you're grouped up with people who are also farming Emperor or also farming every conflict. That ensures that you get 15% more AP per conflict. Now, going into the next tip, have repair kits. Because having repair kits also ensures that you get more AP. Because I've restated and I know I'm hitting this point over the head. You need to have the most AP. So anytime there's damaged walls, damaged doors, you either take a keep, win a defensive. You want to be the one that's fixing those things. Because again, you'll have a 15% AP buff from the delve. And you'll also be the one that's repairing walls, doors, etc. So you'll be getting even more AP from that. And that will ensure that you're really pushing as much AP numbers as possible. Plus, AP is also good for gold. You do one AP. It's a nice currency to have. Then we have have siege weapons. So I wrote this one down, not because it's going to necessarily give you more AP or anything like that. If you're the one that throws all these siege weapons down, why do I think you need to have siege weapons then? Because... People are sometimes like kittens, and kittens don't like to be corralled, and sometimes you need to be that corraller. Sometimes you have to go in to be the one to put down the siege weapons, because a lot of you who've gone to Cyrodiil, your first ever experiences, or have been there long enough, know that a lot of times, a whole bunch of people will arrive to stand outside a castle, 
And that's all that their offensive will ever amount to because nobody has enough siege weapons to really start sieging the castle. And by the time everyone has scrambled to try to herd the kittens together, the other alliance has popped through, teleported in, and wiped everyone out front because people didn't start the offensive. So people were able to still teleport to that castle to defend it. It's very important to have siege weapons. I personally just don't trust other people. So if you want to make sure that your alliance stays on top, I would encourage you guys, you specifically, the person watching this video who goes out and farms it, make sure you have the equipment necessary to launch any offensive that you would so need to. You can buy siege weapons from alliance vendors. You can also buy them from other players too because they have a tendency to give them to us. A lot of people deconstruct them, so I would say if you have a bunch of friends, be like, you know, hey, can I have your siege equipment? Put them in a bank and store them up for those, you know, late night campaign emperor pushes. Next up, we have utilized campaign resets. Now, campaign resets are a quintessential piece to what you're going to want to be doing because after that point, everyone's leaderboards completely goes away which means that it's a fresh slate. Everyone going in is going to have equal opportunity to get to the Emperor ship and is going to have equal opportunity to AP farm. And you're going to have all these tips so you're going to know how to maximize the AP. So Emperor ship and campaign resetting is probably the easiest tactic that you can utilize because it's a fresh slate for everybody. Next we have, consider having multiple allianced characters. Now this is definitely a more interesting tip um, that I have suggested because after when I was doing Raven Watch, I noticed that a lot of the people that I was playing against were either in multiple alliances or at least communicated with other alliances because they enjoyed PvP. So they would actually hop on to other alliances. If Blue took the whole map, they would hop on to Reds to help take the map back for the Reds. Why that's very helpful is, is it ensures that they're not only pushing for emperorship on two characters, doubling their AP, but it also means that if somebody that they like or that they, if it's them themselves, needs to get emperorship, they can go on another character, take all the main keeps, and then they can go back to their other alliance and take all the main keeps again. So it ensures that somebody is always pushing for that emperorship and there's always conflict in those lower population campaigns especially for the below 50 campaigns and especially for raven watch this is definitely a great tip and finally participate in everything whenever there is any time you're not doing something in cyrodiil that you're not actively fighting that you're not actively going out there kicking down doors taking keeps defending throwing siege weapons getting your ap buffs you are losing to other people on the leaderboards. If you're taking breaks, if you're doing anything, unfortunately, other people are going to try to get ahead of you. This is a very competitive title. It's a very competitive area. As you know, PvP is already competitive in it itself. Then you gotta compete with other alliances and your own alliance, and sometimes people even in your own group. So it's a very competitive thing. So try to participate in as many things as possible. The number one tip that I actually saw on Reddit was just have enough free time to become the emperor and you'll become the emperor. Now, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to take off time of work to become the emperor. So hopefully this could be a little bit easier for you. But there is some truth in that where if you basically dedicate enough time to it, you will become the emperor. You just may look back and hate the amount of time that it took you. For me, it took me about 48 hours. I probably took... 12 hours of breaks between those two days over the weekend to become the emperor. It was a slog, but thankfully I was off work. Kind of like I am right now. Maybe I'll become the emperor again. Only joking. I don't think I could ever do that again to my body, my old man joints. But that is going to wrap up the video. It's been a bit of a longer video, but it answers one of the more complex questions in the Elder Scrolls Online. And it actually kind of talks about one of the hardest achievements in the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, probably not the hardest, although you guys actually did suggest a top five hardest titles video, which is actually very unique. So I'm going to have to definitely reach out to some other people and get some opinions on that because it's very hard to gauge what's hard, you know, because there's solo hard, four man hard, trial hard. So I have to definitely see what other people's opinions are on that before I get scolded in the comments. But as a reminder and as a segue here, 
always, leave a comment comments below because you're entered into the giveaway. We just did our drawing for the month of December. We had two winners, and these are the two winners. And I want to thank them again for their comments, even though both both of them were kind of funny. <laughs> so thank you guys again. I pulled two comments. Any comment is eligible. You boost your odds by being subscribed because one comment will be pulled from a pool of all subscriber comments, and then one will be pulled from just every comment left in general. Thank you guys again for so much for watching. We'll be live within an hour of whenever this video takes to finish rendering on my you know potato computer. And we'll be live on both Twitch and YouTube. So I hope to see you there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. This, my cat spent like half this video walking around only to now be asleep in the outro scene where I could pick her up and be like, look guys, she's here. Now she's sleeping in her little ball. Well, she's not sleeping. She's just doing that thing where she goes, Ooh. but she's being, she's being cute. But um, hopefully you guys liked the video. Uh, this is one of your guys' suggestions. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much again for sticking around past the outro and I'll see you guys in an hour.